He that has an ear, let him hear. Faith come by what? And hear it by what? Well, if people distract you, you can't hear God's word. There's nothing in here should distract you from hearing God's word. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearls or scorn? Who? So separate us from the love of God. As it written, for thou sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep before the slaughter. Somebody said nay. nay. Or somebody said no. no. And all of these things we are more than a conqueror through him that loves us. For I am a sweet, neither death come on, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Right now, I want you to get somebody hand and say to them, say, neighbor, stay the course and don't give up. Say, neighbor, Stay the cause and don't give up. Maybe see you. Do you not know this? If you don't know this, you need to know this. If you're going to live this life, you cannot have thin skin. If you're going to live this life, you must have thick skin. Because people and things will challenge you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Life is full of challenges. Are you with but well, this is my classroom right now. Everybody in here said life, life is full, full. of challenges. Yes. You overcome one, there's another. Yes. You overcome one, there's another. Yes. You overcome another, there's another. Yes. You overcome another, there is a what? Life at every stage and every phase, life is full of challenges. These challenges will cause sometimes you to have setbacks. These challenges will cause sometimes you to be disappointed. Your heart will be made to bleed and to ache. You'll be panting the floor, pulling out your hair, asking the question, why? Why me, Lord? The biggest hurt, the greatest hurt, will come from people that you have the greatest confidence in. And the places that you feel secure, you will have the greatest hurt, the greatest disappointment. But I want you to know, God has always Work in your favor. Yes. And that nothing ever can happen in your life that God had not foreseen nor foreknew it to happen before it occurred. Amen. That you may be surprised, Sharon, but God is not. Amen. Carol, God is not surprised well, what you're going through. Yeah. Because God has a plan. Repeat that piece of the Lord has a plan. And you ought to, once you have a distance of time to move away from it, 
Sister Judy, you were all, you heard. Question is, Lord, why you take my daughter? Regardless of the lifestyle, regardless of anything, God, why did you take my daughter? I was praying for her. And I felt within my spirit that there will be a turnaround. But God, why did you do that? But Sister Judy, I want you to know, God chose you because he knew you were strong enough to get through it. Everybody can't go through what you've been through. Some folks will collapse, some folks will lose their mind. But even as tragic as he is as it was, you still found a place in your heart to tell God thank you. So somebody said, oh, all things. It's, 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 it's wonderful when you have matured through experiences to know that God, that God got this. Yes. And since God has this, you got to stay the cause. You, how many people know that you got to encourage yourself? David had to encourage himself when things looked bleak and hopeless. Right. And everybody was pointing their finger at him because they came and destroyed the land and took the children and the greater and left when they returned. They left the village. They, re, they arrived at a village that was on fire, but the occupants was gone. And, and the soldiers were blaming David, but David had to encourage himself. How many of you know that there are times when, you got to, when you're going through that nobody else wants to encourage you? You feel like Job when Bildad, Eliphaz, and Zophar showed up and they sat there for one week and didn't say a word. And when they opened their mouth, they condemned Job. And all Job could say, though he slay me. Come on, somebody, yet will I trust. In other words, he said, I can't make sense of this. There's some things you can't, I can't make sense of this, but I do know that I serve a sensible God. And God has me. So I must stay the course, stay focused, because I am a winner. Be that I am a winner. How many of you know that we've already won? The text that comes to us was ever comes to us during Paul's writing to the Roman church. It was general epistle that was circulated. It is his, it is actually his thesis on sociology, the study of salvation. He deals with all the components of salvation. Sanctification, justification, reelection, adoption. It's all within these 16 chapters. The whole thrust of it deals with giving teeth to the resurrected power of Jesus the Christ. But then within this book, there are times that Paul goes off strip and Paul refocuses on things that are practical. With all of his knowledge of salvation and the various components of salvation and how we can secure that. Because Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is come the power of God unto salvation to the Jews first and then all to Gentile. He said the gospel is the power of God. Did y'all hear me? The gospel is the manifestation of the power of God at work in the lives of those who hear the gospel. That's why Paul said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As I hear the word, my faith is activated. Paul said that God has dealt to every man in Romans 12 a mention of faith. So the gospel, are you listening? Is the power of God. Repeat after me. The gospel is the power of God. And therefore he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power. It, it, it is obvious and it seems like it's inferring that there were some who were disheartened by what people had to go through in the early church. 
and maybe perhaps they were ashamed of the gospel. But Paul affirms and stands on a conviction that I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God. And sad to say, brothers and sisters, we live in a society today that there are a lot of Christians who allow their mouth, mouth to be muted because it almost seems like you're ashamed of the gospel. You want to blend it because it's, it's, it's socially acceptable to blend. But the truth of the matter is all of us must stand for something. If we don't stand for something, we fall for nothing. So unequivocally, I must announce to you, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is, come on, come on, it is the power of God. I'm not ashamed. And so he gives us all of these components of salvation. And then out of nowhere, he now shifts and he goes away from the script. And he begins that in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. He says, for we know. For we know. And if we don't, if we don't move any further, it seems to suggest, or oh, it is inferred when he says, we know, he says, I have this experience that because it's the power of God, I have the experience to know that all things. He says, I have some, I have some distance of time to reflect on where I came from. How many happen that you have some distance of time to reflect on your own Christian experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look back and see how far we've come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Even in our own African tradition, as we celebrate this month of black history, reflecting on, on, on the past, as we celebrate the moment and anticipate the future, when we look at the great men and women who stood during the heat and during the atrocities that slave, black slaves experienced, we who now, who benefited from them who was humiliated, from them who were great, from them who was closed down like dogs, from them that was beaten only because they marched and had a sense of conviction, to all of us who have experienced these days of ease and Zion, we got to always thank God when we look back how far we've come. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? We're not so far removed from where we were. Uh, some of you were there in all of the broadcast, broadcasts. Some of you were there in all the cities. And you can declare, you can declare, and when this happened, there were people who said, I never dreamed that a black man would be elected to the highest office in the land. My mom and daddy would never would have dreamed that an African American of African descent, part of the diaspora, would emerge above all of the racism and all of the segregation that still exists. How many of you know that racism is still real? Yeah, yeah. It still exists. Bigotry is still, is still active. It is ingrained in the fabric of, of American society. But yet God somehow allowed some of us to experience what others could not experience. And we've come a long ways. We've come a long ways. But we still have a long ways to go. Just look how far we've come. Just look how far we've come, but we still have a long ways to go. And Paul, somehow, he moves from off the script, and he says all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord, for them that are called according to his purpose. In other words, he's saying, you got to stay focused. You got to stay the cause. You can't give up. You can't have thin skin. You got to be determined and know whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, whatever's ahead of you, you got to know that all things, all things are working on your benefit. All things is favoring your life. All things is happening for your benefit. You may not 
understand it. You may not like it, how it feels, but you got to trust God. Because God knows better than you that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord, for them who are called. I'm called of God. He says, not only does these things work together for the good, because I'm called of God. He says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. He said, he saw me before I saw myself. He, 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 he saw not just my beginning, but he saw my ending. And the word, this word predestined me that he chose me. He picked me despite the choices and decisions I would make. Do you not know he knew you were going to mess up? Do you not know he knew you were going to be a mess? Do, do you not know he knew you were going to take that avenue, that boulevard, that street, that lane, that highway. This morning, I said in my sermon, I did a comparison and I celebrated my sister, my baby sister, Lisa. And I said, Lisa, you got something to thank God for? Because the route that you took was the route that led you to your destination. He, she had to go through what she went through in order to arrive where she, where she is. See, see, if you only knew where my sister was, she was, she was on the street. And let me tell you, she was raised in a Christian home. Her daddy a pastor. Her mama a church mom. Mm -hmm. Because you're raised in a Christian home doesn't mean that you're going to be a Christian. Don't assume that all children raised by Christian parents they become Christians. She, she, she had to go through what she went through to get to arrive to her destiny. She had to go out in the street. She had to explore her body and abuse her body until she found the law. Amen. Because she was lost and he wasn't lost, God is always at the same place where God has always been has always been. And when she found what she was looking through, then God picked her up. She was like the prodigal son when she came to us. Sometimes you're not going to get where you ought to be until you come to yourself. Sometimes you're not going to arrive to your destiny until you come to yourself. When she was dragged all the way down to the pig pen and ate the slop that was meant for the pig, the leftovers, the reject stuff when she came to herself, wobbling in her sins and her mess. She said, I believe I go back home. I come to tell somebody, your children will come to themselves, train up a child in the way it should go. When they become old, they will not depart, and they will find their destination. This morning I was so blessed. I was upstairs tending to the roof and tending. But while I was upstairs, I was watching and walking. Thank God for social media. And I saw Doreen, little grandson. The Bible said, the children shall lead them. Isn't it funny that grown folks don't want to publicly read God's word. But this 10-year-old uh, ten ten -year boy, he got up with confidence. He didn't stumble over his words. Something being planted in this young man. I saw a little preacher, I saw a little preacher standing behind that podium. And he blessed me so much, I went in my pocket and took out $10 and said, son, I love you because he blessed me. I sold into his life. If you don't do it, if you don't praise him, if you don't praise him, if you won't praise him, and you won't do it, 
He will even command the rocks to cry. You will ride to your destination regardless of what route you had to take. So don't be ashamed of the route you took. Don't ever be ashamed of the mistakes that you made in your past. Do you not know that God forgives? And he forgets and he folds it in the sea of forgetfulness. Never for it to rise again. If all of us be honest, a whole lot of us have made some mess, to made some poor choices and some poor decisions. But the reason why our stuff is not exposed is because nobody ain't talking. But somebody can talk your talk. That's why you ought to keep your mouth shut about rehearsing people's past. Because everybody in here have a past. Why y'all get quiet in here? Look at your neighbor and say, everybody has a past. Everybody has some faults, and everybody has some flaws, everybody has some failure, everybody has some disappointment, everybody has poor choices and poor decisions, but thanks be to God, he looked beyond all my fault. And how many here can testify, he saw my need, he met me right where I was, and he picked me up. He said, God has predestined me for this. He foresaw me. And I predestined. All this is the, the, the whole component of this soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. But he, he, he seemed like he, 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 he moved away from the, from the script for just a moment. And then he still picked it up. He says, since all things work together for good, because I love God, and since I am all known of God, and he has predestined me, he asks a rhetorical, powerful question. And in and, 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 and verse, and verse 35, he said, who shall separate me from the love of God, from the love, from the love of Christ? Now, now notice this. There, there is a subtle arrogance yeah. in the tone of this text. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. Oh, y'all want to dance on that. Yeah. There, is a, there is a subtle arrogance, a, a subtle confidence uh -huh. that he lifts. Yeah. He says, he says, all things work together for good yeah. because I love God, yeah. because I'm called, yeah. and for, 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 he, for, he, for he saw who I was, and he predestined me. Yeah. Now who? Who, who, who can stand yeah. and, and, and place someone a charge against God and let? Yeah. If, if I'm elected by God, yeah. who, who can who? I, I, I dare you. I dare you, Satan. Yeah. I dare you yeah. to bring a charge against me. Yeah. I've been elected by God. In other words, in other words, in other words, Jackie, God, God, God got me. Uh, who, who can bring a charge against God elect? It's God who justified. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. And then he said, and this is what I like, he says, for who can separate me from what? Who can separate us and not from the love of Christ? And then he described in detail, he says, I love him because he loves me. And love, true love, don't separate. True love endures. Love is kind. Love does not vaunt itself. It's not easy Provoke. It bears all things. It believes in all things. Why, why did I describe that? Because a lot of folks are in love. But love don't have them. Because if you're in something, you get out of it. I hear you, Bishop. Did you hear me? Anything you're in, come on, help me, somebody. You can. See, 
The Bible says God is love. And if I'm born of God, I'm a lover. Everybody that's born of God says you're a lover. I'm a lover because I'm born of God. He said, who shall separate me from the love of Christ? That means this love is so, is enduring. It is, it is, it is ever abiding. And then it says, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine or nakedness or prayer or sword. Now, he now outlined these things because these are the things he's been through. Paul had to endure tribulation. He had to endure stress. He was persecuted and he was, he had famine and nakedness and pearl and sword. And, and he says, he said, nay, in all these things. He said, I'm not going to allow these things to become a distraction. Can I let you into some personal? When we acknowledge and announce that we're going to pay this church off, the devil heard it. And when the devil heard it, he said, I'm going to give you a distraction, a major distraction. And he started working on the roof. And we had people that we thought was competent people, but they came negligent in one thing. Uh -huh. They did not properly secure the roof with the elements. See, the devil controlled the elements. And, 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 and you know, the devil, you know, the devil used you. And the devil used every opportunity he can. So this week passed when the roof was exposed. The rain came down in the sanctuary. As though there was no kind of covering, and, it went, and something was here to see how it was pouring. It, it literally it destroyed this pulpit. It cracked the pulpit. The floor is warped, and, and the devil said, "Uh huh, uh huh." And the insurance company said, "I ain't gonna give you no money. I'm gonna put you through some tribulation." And you know you can get discouraged when you're working hard. It seems like the more you work, you take two steps and look like you're taking five steps. But I announce, I announce today I'm more than a conqueror. In other words, the devil trying to get me to get off course. Trying to get me to become misfocused on the prize. But I'm more than a conqueror. He said, why I'm more than a conqueror? Because I can. I can. I can. Do all things through Christ that give me strength. No matter how difficult it is, no matter what struggle you're going through, no matter if there may be a failure in your season, don't give up. Stay the cause. Come on, help me. Say, neighbor, I'm finished. Don't give up. Stay the cause. No matter how much you endure, he says, don't give up. Because you love Jesus. He said, Lay in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. He said, For I am persuaded. He said, I am convinced that neither death, that neither death, did you hear me? Neither life, neither angels, neither principalities, neither powers. Neither things present, neither things to come, neither height, neither depth, neither any other creature will shall be able to separate me or to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So look at your neighbor and say, no oh, neighbor, no matter. What you're going through, tell your neighbor to stay the cause. Come on, say stay the cause. Don't be given by what you see is only an illusion. God, look at your mind and say God has it. Come on and say God is changing it for your behalf. Oh. For the good to them that love the Lord. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that He holds the future. All I got to do is to praise Him in the midst of my storm. Sister Martha, years ago, I used to say words 
said, I really didn't understand or fully grasp. But since I live a lift of time, I know the significance of the lyrics of the song. There was a song that, that said, don't wait till the battle's over. Stop, look at your neighbor. Thank you.